How about that prick's face when you saw the gat? Welcome to Smack Up. Welcome How's everyone to Smack doing? Up. <laughs> What's everyone up We're to here today? For the <laughs> I'm here to discuss the economics. That is definitely me when I saw the prick's face it's when you saw the gat. <laughs> How about that prick's face when you saw the gat? With a big face. Look at that. That's the right. qualifying match for the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 22 big time. This was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but hold on, we got to talk first because they had to remind us of last week's main event, the multi-man tag match as as always, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, they showed Mark Henry falling through Kurt Angle like 80 times in a row. I think it gave me a concussion. I feel like they recapped it like 80 times too. Yeah. Oh yeah. They talk about it so much. Everything this is a, recapped every week. This was a special episode, because <laughs> even in the recaps, we got Michael Cole's Oh My's. <laughs> so oh this, my. Is, this is the way of 2006. They, uh, so the show starts off. Uh, we're in It's St. Patrick's Day, guys. Woo! And we in oh. Bossier City, baby. We in Louisiana. Yeah. The wow. Cal I mean, in Louisiana. Uh, there's a sign. I saw a sign in the crowd that said, Here I am, Ricky. So that has to be in reference to the Starks. I hope Ricky's doing all yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who Listen, else would it be? There's before no other Ricky before we get into the Lumberjack match, let me let me name off some of these Lumberjacks. The SmackDown specials. I got a whole list here. So we got we got Animal. We got William Regal. We got Kid Cash. He's here. Remember that guy? Who's who? Uh, Jamie Noble. Big Vito. Gregory Helms. Scotty Tuhati. Uh, Orlando Jordan. Simon Dean. Sylvain Granier. Matt Hardy, Tatanka, Super Crazy, cool. Psychosis, Paul London, Brian Kendrick, Funaki, and the Gemini. Oh, yes. I missed you guys so much. I Did missed you? them so much. Yeah, they won I, on I, Velocity. I, I completely forgot who they are. Who are they? Remind me. Oh, they're Mike and Todd. Mike and Todd? Who, who, what do they do? Handler? I was Josh. I'm, I'm just Josh. I'm just Josh and you. It's Simon Jake and Jesse. Dean, their handler. Jake and Jesse. Jake and Jesse, Gemini. Yeah. And they, uh,. So, they do they do gym based crimes is what you're telling me. Where's Rico? I think so. What the fuck? Where's Rico? Oh Rico? Oh man, Rico is so good. Where's American Gladiator Rico? Oh, I got I got some good news for you, Joe. On the velocity uh-huh. taping, Test had his oh, yeah? first match with WWE since he got released. He's back, baby. So they rehired him. Yeah, he's back. Welcome uh, back, who'd Test. He beat? Let me let me guess. He beat uh he... Sylvan in a dark match. Yes. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Are you looking at the me... same list, pal? Yes, I am. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> in the year 2006 you either um when you get fired from wwe you either just retire or you just go wrestle on or you become a lumberjack a couple months yeah i mean where, where else are they going you, you ain't going to tna you think that guy's going to roh dude the hell no <laughs> where he's just gonna get bullied by fucking the between generation of millennials and gen zers who are trying to wrestle over there that's right the- what was the test work rate looking like? I have no clue. Prime? Well, we'll get there. Oh, in his prime? Uh, yeah. Give us the test career rundown Shit, right now, dude. Tyler. Just you don't imagine, have that ready? Imagine Triple H, right? Imagine Triple H without the uh-huh. nose. Long hair, blonde. But he's actually six foot, like, whatever, like, huge. He's like, like, tall as imagine, shit. Imagine Big Cass. Yeah. Big mm. Cass. That's it. Yeah, okay. that's a, yeah, That's yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine right. Big Cass. <laughs> I can rock with it. I think Big Cass is more like accessible to doing like bigger spots but test, right, test imagine added. imagine imagine edge but large there you go oh when is aw gonna scoop him up he's dead i know he the ape. <laughs> well tony well, i mean wanted to rebuild him. honestly though <laughs> honestly though they i would I, I wouldn't be i wouldn't put it past tony Khan at this point right oh, to hire his gravestone yeah i mean we're, we're gonna get uh goldberg there eventually i'm sure right I can't yeah, well, Rick Flair's there right now. Yeah. So, unfortunately, with this... Goldberg uh, and MJF are going to have a bonding moment. Huh? No, get that, get that, get that future <laughs> shit out of here, because Fit Finley is fighting Bobby Lashley right now, man. I'm so <laughs> glad that I know his name is Finley and that he loves to fight, because I might yeah. actually forget. Listen, yeah, this thank, build was thank awesome. God, thank God they say it a hundred times. This build was so actually, good. Actually, Finley comes down with his theme... I'm uh-huh. Finley, and I love to fight. And then Taz repeatedly said he loves to fight, and he loves to fight, and this guy is Finley, and he loves to fight. Literally yeah. uninterrupted for about five times, and just <laughs> killing me. You can tell Michael Cole is just ready to kill himself. 
Yeah, not much happened during this match. It's very disappointing because that shit that was building up to this was awesome. I love the beatdowns. Yeah, so fun stories. They went and crazy. The brawls. The lumberjacks weighed it down. Um, I don't really. To be have... honest, lumberjack matches are just bad gimmick yeah. matches all the time. This should have just been like an no rules, a hardcore match or an extreme rules match. It so, could have been fine if the babyface lumberjacks actually weren't like dumb morons and fought the heel lumberjacks. What, and they they were just... incredibly Whoa, scared because the first time. On? Yeah, because the first time. Uh... Uh, the first person that gets thrown out of the ring is uh, Finley. Lashley throws him out from the second rope. And then Finley just beats up Funaki, and then Paul London just looks just like at him like a scared real. little baby. And then Finley goes back in like nothing happened. Well, I mean, the British uh, pirate being scared of the strong Irish man that loves to fight. What else is new? Yeah, come on, dog. Your people suppressed the Irish. <laughs> Yeah, so the finish is uh, Sylvan hops in the ring for whatever reason. Sylvan was angry at Bobby Lashley, and he swings at a chair, and he misses, and Bobby Lashley spears the shit out of him. I'd be mad at Lashley, too. He was Why was Sylvan so upset? Time. I don't know. Bobby Lashley turns around. Cool. Finley has the shillelagh in his hand and hits him right in the noodle, and he, he wins. He's going to Money in the Bank. Wow. Yay. we Then he wins Money in the Bank, right, Tyler? I think so, right? I don't. We find out. Who who could say the big time is in sixteen days? Yeah, so 16 days much early. larger than life. Lime. Thank you, Peter Gabriel. And we're right. you know you know what else, dude? Remember, big time Chicago. And you know what's this weekend? Uh-huh. You know what's this weekend? Survivor Series, right? And you know where that is? Chicago. And you know who's from Chicago? Cole I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Those, I'll leave uh, that to you guys. Peppers. It's those peppers that they put in the hot dogs for no I'll reason. Leave, I'll leave it those to my. Chicago. I'll leave it to my informed listeners out there. And, and casserole pizza. This is my. This is my my come my come dog whistle for you guys. Speaking of big time moments, WrestleMania X Seven. Remember that one with the gimmick Battle Royale. Whoa! Oh yeah, baby. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Battle Royale. <laughs> The Iron Sheik wins the Subway why Battle would you, Royale. Why would you? Oh, first of all, you great. You picked the first good WrestleMania, right? But then you picked the worst match in the first good WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, that's right, like, to what? To be fair, the Iron Sheik won it. So come on. You gotta, yeah. Respect. Some respect praise, praise up to the Iron Sheik. R.I.P. Love R.I.P. you. Love we're, you, Bubba. We're, we're dating us. These are, these are officially episodes in the post-mortem Iron Sheik era. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're talking about Survivor Series, which by the time this gets uploaded, is going to be like... It's going to be like... Yeah, then, we'll be in Survivor Series like 2040 by the time this CM goes Punk out. will definitely have debuted there. And there will, yeah. will be no further questions. And then Cody's going to kill him. Yeah, Cody will behead him on live TV. Yeah. But, we, uh, we find we find the two, uh, two boys backstage, Mercury and Nitro, and they're... Getting fucking horny at this muscle oh, yeah. fitness, and I, you know, listen, it's, it's Vince fine. McMahon magazine. Yeah, too. I, w- I was like, I damn, it. they just, really want their the, admiring the boss. They truly fooled me for a second. I was like, what? Vince, Vince is totally natty, bro. That's yeah. what they're looking oh, at, bro. Those games. But that wasn't it. That wasn't the whole story. Yeah, he was looking at Raw. He was looking at a Raw superstar, Candice Michelle's Playboy, and we, we, I, I fucking almost puked, dude. Yeah, I know. I mean, like, we already had a segment of this raw shitter. Like they and were, like, and Melina, I understandably upset. Goes, you know what? I'm gonna get off to this one. Well, that made me very upset. Well, what what you are mean? you gonna do with it? I, I know this was a Vince written segment all over. <laughs> you just, yeah. Now you're gonna salivate for me. Yeah, the C- the CW needed something like this on a Tuesday yeah, night. Did. The WB Network, you mean? <laughs> what you I think it was, it was it was not airing on a uh, CW or whatever. <laughs> it was it was on the WB Network, I think is what it was called at the it time. It might have been UPN. Oh. It, would, it would it would become uh, CW later. But, I see. You yeah. guys don't remember? I mean, JBL said it like four times that he's on eight different networks or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They were they were fighting for a new contract at that time. Clearly, it was a contract year. Molina takes her dirty magazine of Vince McMahon and walks away and runs into Crystal Marshall doing some stretches. And she goes, "Hey, does she? Does oh she slick my. on it though? I'm very Truly impressed with your match of the last week." Of the show. As yeah, her quote, <laughs> as her quote, she says, "Crystal has to learn that Molina is the most best top diva in the WWE." And then our guy, our our man Paul Burchill, shows up with beads all over him, and everyone just comes over and starts laughing at him. And they go, <laughs> "Look at this dude!" 
Look at this dude. And he pulls out his, his sword. He pulls out his sword. <laughs> and then runs off scared. Oh, shit. And then Crystal March was like, wow, I love pirates. And then he's yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And then keeps admiring his sword again. She, she you see that prick's face when you pull so, a gun? And then he's so me. He's falls. so me. What do you woman say? comes up to you and compliments your sword. I just admire my sword. And then, Damn right. And then the Taz said, "You see that prick's face when we saw the gat? <laughs> Look at that prick! Wait, what do you got? Yeah, I was Randy Orton when we saw the gat. <laughs> yeah, he's getting set up for his interview. They kept like setting up the interview, and I was like, oh wow, the interview's next. Nope. No, okay. it's like 30, 40 minutes later. They just they just put yeah. Randy in that room and said, stay. <laughs> it's a uh, long term booking. You wouldn't get it. They uh, I guess okay. So oh, we missed something. There was something very important we didn't talk about. What are you talking about? Well, when they showed the old man, uh, Royal Rumble Battle Royale, whatever. Uh huh. They immediately after that said that the second season of Hogan Knows Best. Oh yeah, yeah. Is be airing on TV. That's gonna oh, be that's gonna be shit. bonus content for us at some point. Yeah, we we gotta watch that. That's a you don't have to watch this brother segment. Yeah, I'll yeah. put I'll put Naram and Martin in a room together, and they have to watch it together. I'll have a good time watching it. Only, yeah, but you have, to watch, to like, you have to watch it. to watch it with a raw down mental. person, so you might have convulsions. That's you all know? right. By the time you come back to the room, Martin will be like choked out on the floor. <laughs> VH1 goes crazy, bro. So now we got a a mixed tag match for whatever reason. William Regal and Jillian Hall are teaming up. What do you mean for some reason? It's it was a direct continuation of what just happened. But, but why is William Regal with whatever? And he's they're fighting Paul Birchall and Crystal. Before because I, Crystal is enabling Paul Birchall's pirate behavior, and which is William fine. Regal's try, no, yeah. William Regal is trying to save his gay son from yeah. being gay. No, I it's good. I think they said that Teddy made this match because they're both losers, and so he put the losers on the match so they can go against the winners. Well, Paul's Paul's entrance is really damn good. I love him uh, peeking at the camera and then sliding down on his rope. He really looked like he wasn't feeling it this time around, you know? He, well, like he looked like he, he looked like he person. just woke up and was like, "eh." Because well, he's got okay, a mixed I tag do this, match I guess. to do, and then slides down from the rope. I want Joe to go over this in. match because he loves the divas. Ooh boy, yeah, Jillian and and Crystal Marshall get right at it immediately. I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, there wasn't really much here. Like it's just them, like like slapping each other until William like pulls Crystal Marshall off and then Paul's like hey don't do that it's time for me to switch in now and uh, every time they do these mixed matches the ref is like okay I guess I don't know I can't really control anything here so the ref is just kind of bumbling around even though he's no, you get he's, just, he's just the guy he's like oh you don't have to tag if 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 the other person decides to go in the other person has to go in so it's it's always dumb it's always a bad gimmick this was but, a um, bag match, is what you're saying. Yeah. I mean Jillian uh hits a hits a back booty drop and then they and then the the, the ladies switch out uh, and Regal and, and Paul come in and they slop each other up. They slop oh, each man. other up pirate style here in Louisiana. And then they just kinda they just have the same match that they had last week or two weeks ago. Yeah, basically. Oh yeah. I mean yeah. he tries to go for like the springboard, he doesn't get it, uh kicks off and then uh, hits his, his standing Spanish fly, which Taz is still somehow surprised by. He's like, oh my god, man, it's a Uranagi, but it's like, it's not. And then he does a flip, man. Spanish flies are cool, man. Yeah, yeah it's really it's, cool. It's, it's so weird that, like, seeing Paul Burchill be, like, the innovator of the standing Spanish fly in America in 2006. And he's just covered in beads. <laughs> he's covered in Mardi Gras beads and, and like, eye makeup. Like, yeah, man. Give it to this guy, I guess. Fuck it. That's what Vince was saying. He There's could do a, what? There was a bit here where fucking Paul Virtual does something. I don't remember what. And you hear Taz say, oh, we don't do that on a ship. And Cole says, the only ship you've ever been on is the It's a Small World ride at Disney World. Damn. Oh, wow. How can God, you do Taz that? Is like, he, 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 he. I agree. What it's a very weird freak? moment from Taz. That's crazy. So I looked up who like who made the Spanish fly. And it was Rey Mysterio Jr. apparently. He innovated oh, it. Wow. When did he do that? In the nineties. <laughs> oh, if he did, was doing that shit in the nineties, the fucking people's brains are probably leaking out their ears. 
Yeah, watching nobody that. people knew what the Spanish fly was in the nineties. Yeah, who knows how many more people were Mysterio killed in Mexico? If if cult of whatever is correct in their assumption that this is where this came from, because I can't really find any other information than Ray Mysterio did it. Congrats, thank you, thank you, Ray. We'll see you later in the show. Oof. Yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll see him. And they say something there, and I said, "Oof, oof, that's not happen." Cut to backstage, and Charmel's losing her fucking mind in the back, and Booker cannot get a hold of her. She's just yeah, like, he's ah! out. "The boogeyman could be anywhere." Well, I get it. Oh my god! And Booker's like, "Hey, here's a package." <laughs> Here's then the a... boogeyman's like not hometown, but like I mean, he's getting like the the power up, you know. They're in Louisiana. Oh yeah, he's he's getting he's getting those like those that Bayou power up. The Bayou <laughs> power up. Yeah, we're we're near a swamp. I'm sure. I'm sure this is arena is the parking lot is a swamp. In fact, so yeah, but yeah. I think Charmel has probably done the best job of selling how terrifying the boogeyman is supposed to be. She's actually fucking freaked out, yeah, and it kind of screaming. It kind of made me a little bit <laughs> uncomfortable for a little bit. Like, oh my god, the boogeyman! Yes, the boogeyman, chill, bro. Cry. Boogeyman just <laughs> just just showing up. He just <clears throat> he's just doing nothing, and they're like, oh my god! Literally, literally just does like, like a two step and spills worms out of his he's mouth. He's just showing off just his screams. worm collection. Yeah, and <laughs> we see how like freaked out both Booker T and Charmel get later. During Booker oh, Booker's Night. great, man. Booker's great with this. But, uh, I want, plug... yeah, I want Naram to tell me about nope. the next Hall of Fame induction. Oh, all right. Well, before that though, they do plug Peter Gabriel's next CD, so y'all should buy that. Oh, of course, haven't. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll have on to that. listen to this. Um, but yeah, so they do another Hall of Fame segment, um, showing off who's gonna who's gonna be inducted into the 2006 Hall of Fame class and who's going to be, you know, bringing them in. Well, the next announced name here is... I'm probably going to fuck up this last name. is Vern Gagne. Vern Gagne. Yep. Vern Ganja. Ganja. Vern, Vern Giner is inducted into the Hall of Fame. This dude is like... They show pictures of this guy when he was like 24, looking 57. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like old school buff. Like this man was on... This man was like all natty. This guy real. was the son of a plumber. Yeah, this guy... <laughs> Was definitely the son of a plumber, um, but he's going to be. Bro is eating cigarettes son. from the age of three for sure. Oh, dude, you already know. I mean, like I, I did a little like digging on him, and Vern was apparently in the Navy uh, during World War II, and he was in the underwater demolition team, which, for those who don't know, eventually ended up becoming a part of the Navy SEALs. So this guy is probably is uh, OG SEAL. Terrifying, yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, this guy's probably legitimately fucking terrifying. Um, I would not. I would actually probably love to go train in his barn if he was still alive. <laughs> but he's a uh, died in 2015. Oh, oh rest in peace. Come on. Rest in peace, for Ganja. That's where he did his wrestling school. It was in his like barn. I'm looking on his. Farm. I'm looking on his wiki Stuart's page. Stuart's dungeon. Stuart's stupid dungeon. Get yeah. out of here. He, uh, I yeah. want to go hang out in Vern Ganja's fucking barn. Uh, donkey well, barn. Well, hold on. He played on the Marines football team with the likes of Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch. I just want yeah, to let you know that. An NFL fan. He played with some. This guy is not real. Okay, so he is a, a halfback, an end, and a flanker. And apparently, a flanker is a wide receiver. <laughs> That's hilarious. This they were playing football when the rules didn't exist. It's a different time. <laughs> it's true. You ain't pulling this guy. Oh, in, shit. He played. Elroy Hirsch played Holy for shit, U of M. Dude. Let's go. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, dude. I got, a, I got some interesting shit right here. Oh. Go on. Uh, I just pulled up Vern Gagne's, uh, Vern Ganja's <laughs> Wikipedia page. One of the things here is the death of Helmut Gutman. Oh. And it says on January 26, 2009, Gagne got into an altercation with Helmut Gutman, a 97 year old resident of the Bloomington, Minnesota nursing care facility where they both resided. According to Gutman's widow, who was not present during the altercation, Gagne picked up Gutman and threw him on the floor, then broke his hip by pulling it back his pulling back on his body. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Fucking beast. Neither man had any recollection of the incident. <laughs> Probably <'cause> it's, <laughs> it's all a ganja, dude. 
<laughs> onset ganja it says, and also it's, being it's, a 90 year old guy it says he was diagnosed with alzheimer's so i mean it on makes february sense. 25th 2009 the older man's death was officially ruled a homicide by the hennepin oh, county God. medical examiner's office he was on not march 12th 2009 yeah in Penn County, prosecutor's office officially announced that Ganja would not be criminally charged as a result of the death as because of Ganja's dementia, he lacked the mental capacity necessary to be criminally culpable. Well, I, mean... I just, how the fuck, He man? killed a dude in a nursing home by just, like, throwing him on the ground and then pulling his body back and breaking his hip. Allegedly. They, they, Allegedly. They, I like how they asked the man, they're like, hey, man, are you okay? And the guy's like, yeah, I don't know what the hell happened. This guy, just, I just broke. I woke up, my hip broke. I just realized my hip is broken. And then he Wait, died. Mr. Ganja, what happened? God, just shrugged at him. I don't know, man. So yeah. he lived for like a little bit and then died. I, yeah, that's what it seemed. He didn't die like immediately because of the broken hip. It was like he broke his hip. Everyone was like, what the fuck happened? And they both kind of shrugged. And they, I guess, you know. That's crazy that they call it a homicide because he died he like might have died a month as a later. result of the injuries. Right. Yeah. That's I guess crazy. that's what it is, yeah. Result of injury. Oh, it's I he mean, died on like, February fourteenth, two weeks. You if you break a hip, you know, you're gonna need to go get surgery. It's possible the dude just died during surgery. Yeah. And like that yeah. would be a result of the injury. Yeah. Come on, Vern, what are you doing? Look, you don't become the ace of the American Wrestling Alliance without being able to kill a man by breaking his hip. Drew, you don't <laughs> also, his son, fought. Greg, became uh, Larry Sabisco's brother-in-law eventually. So There you go. Really, to, really like, tight-knit family. We, we just need to re-examine. I need to repeat what was said as the altercation. Like, what the description is. Because I still don't understand. I, I can't visually picture it. Ganja picked up Gutman gotcha. and threw him to the floor, then broke his hip by pulling back on his body. That definitely seems like an over exaggeration. I think he like pulled his collar, and then by nature of be- pulling on somebody that's inside a wheelchair, and probably just fell really out of it. But was he in a wheelchair? I, I, he put him in a wheelchair know, right there. Probably. The attack happened quickly while the men were at a table. It was more like a push and a shove, and it okay. caused Gutman to fall. Okay. Yeah. And it's a little I, bit clearer. I just looked it up, and to add on to this tragedy, in 1974, former wrestler slash promoter Vern Giner produced and starred in his own independent film, The Wrestler. Oh, yeah, that's oh my right. God. I forgot about that. So, wait, <sighs> isn't there another movie called The Wrestler? It's yeah. Like yeah. Re- so, is that like With a Mickey remake? Rourke. No, it's not a remake. Oh. Well, they should do oh. that. This looks fucking awesome. It looks like he's in the jungle fucking wrestling. Oh, that's kind of tight. Let him be. Let him be. You know what? I was breaking the hips of Komodo Speaking dragons of let it be, before right, I was let, in let, here. Listen, Ty, I have a demand, and you need to put a picture of this guy in the thumbnail. Oh, Vern? Yeah, I'll put him in. Yeah. Is there a specific picture you want? Is it like yeah. him like grappling? Uh, no, a, I'm going to send it right now. Hold up. Yeah, Pin, you that, can, shit. Like, Pin that shit. Oozling, uh, Chris Benoit. Time, make sure that the audience can see this. Listen, I'll guys, I'm gonna kill you guys because we gotta let it be. Because Charmel is coming out in a B outfit. Oh God! And she's ready for this yeah, uh, she's, yeah. match. She's really she's, selling. She's out. boogie boogeyman proof right now. Booker T and his hermetically sealed wife come down <laughs> yeah. to the ring. Yeah, this is like exactly like when in Death Stranding, you would need to suit up and put on the whole suit to protect yourself against the rain. Yeah, the BTs are coming. The BTs Except this are coming. BT eats worms. Yeah. And it's scary. Here, I'll, I'll go through this real quick. So Booker T is fighting uh, Jobber Jeremy Where Young. Where are demons at? Huh? Anyway. Jeremy Young is here. Oh, him. He uh, never really heard this dude. I couldn't really find too much information about him. Um, except for he was <sighs> like the, the guy that's on fire or something. And they kept making jokes about it. On commentary, oh. uh, Booker just absolutely dog shitted this man. He beat the crap out of him. Uh, Booker, you could hear him just yelling, "Hey, boogeyman! I'm gonna!" Uh, and he kick him, "Boogeyman! Uh, take that, boogeyman!" And the guy's like, "Ah!" Because <laughs> he's getting fucking killed. Uh, Taz, Taz quotes on uh, commentary: "He could be anywhere. He could be in the pantry. He's the boogeyman, Cole." 
man. He Rude could be anywhere. And he lists just the pantry. <laughs> uh, well, Michael so, Cole was feeding for food. some for some craft dinner. You know? Scissors kick ends it. Uh, it was a pretty decent squash. Uh, it's nice to see like a squash on TV because doing both these shows, you just see enhancement fucking, talent, dude. Yeah, you never see enhancement talent anymore, and it's kind of interesting to like look into like what they do, but you never see that on this show at least, or on Raw Down. That's like what the fuck. <laughs> You just see fucking Schnitzky getting killed or something, and you're like, okay, yeah, that's cool that he's here. Sometimes you just want to see a local jobber dying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to yeah. Jeremy Young. Uh, it was I mean, nice like to fit it bad. in the tight two hours. His but... last match was in May 6, 2015, in case you guys oh, were shit. wondering. Who, who, how'd he go out yeah. in style of his match? Uh, says it was an NWA match, and he defeated Purple Haze. No way. Oh, yeah. he, got, he went out on a the stand victory. from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, impressive! William Patrick Corgan could book him. Apparently, yeah, right. his last WWE match was in 2007. He was on another SmackDown episode. So we'll get to him, I guess, another time. Uh, Can't wait. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Boogeyman's music hits, and uh, Charmel. It, it was kind of a weird area because uh, Charmel leaves, and then Booker's like, "I'm gonna fight Boogeyman." Booker slides out the front. And he's like, come on. And then they don't know what to do. And Booker runs around the corner to meet up with Charmel. And they're like, where's he at? Oh, man, where's he at? And then for some reason, he's like, Charmel, go underneath the ring. Charmel's like, okay. And so like he kind of pushes her underneath. And he goes, I'm going to follow, too, backwards. And so he goes in backwards underneath the ring. And then yep. they're like, wait, 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 no. Boogeyman's down here the whole time. And they, wow. they run out. And they run away, and Bookie Man just comes <clears throat> out and eats worms, and, and they're Booker they're T scared like, shitless. Booker T, you would think like Bookie Man like kicked his dog or something. The face he makes here, <laughs> he's like no, no, no! Man. oh and it's my like god, Booker, like he just like he didn't even do anything really. He just you went under the ring, you saw him, and then you got like ran out and ran I, away from. him. I think Booker is just like upset that uh, the Boogeyman Man keeps harassing his wife understandably Charmel is like legitimately terrified yeah they go because they go into the ring and then they they come out but they stick in a shot of booker's face like looking surprised when he does that that face but you can only hear Charmel just like like ear shattering like scream like she's getting stabbed or something it just runs out in her bee suit and they have to like tail off while the boogeyman does his weird dance and eats worms so yeah he's probably more annoyed than anything at this point Man, I would be. He'll get I'm his just chance that with the tomorrow Boogeyman night. Segments just end forever soon. All right, well, Pete, I got some news for you. Jeremy Young wrestled in 2021. Are you kidding oh, me? Boy. Oh my god! Yeah. Did he wrestle? Uh, I don't know. Edgar Garza and Pac Ortega defeated him and Robert Baines. No way. Yeah. Where'd you find this? Uh, cage match. Cage match. Yeah. All right. You you are right. I only found online uh, World of Wrestling immediately. Yeah, that one didn't even have like every match. <laughs> it just had like a couple matches. It didn't even have this one that we watched. Jeremy it did have the one we watched. The did it? I saw it on there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it. Huh. Well, eh, you know. Uh, Tyler likes to lie to make it be known. Hey! Wow. Lion Tyler. Lion Tie, Lion Tie, Lion Tie. Listen, man, Kurt Angle's here. Because I said it three times. Kurt Angle's here, and he's being set up for his interview, too. And they shove him <clears> off <throat> in the corner and say, You wait there. We're not ready for you yet. Uh, Peter Hold Gabriel. On. Yes. Oh, I need to pause for a moment. Jeremy Young also defeated Purple Haze the following year, almost exactly a year later. <laughs> he got his revenge. No, oh, Jerry, no, he just beat Purple Haze twice for no reason. Oh, shit. That's right. These two guys just had uh, separate matches a year apart. They like, almost exactly a year apart. And he just beat him twice. I'm sorry, Purple That's Haze, man. Makes yeah, no but, sense. Yeah, but guess what? Purple Haze just had a match uh, a month ago. So. Oh, my. Where? Uh, it says in Louisiana for the PW225 heavyweight title. Right. He has his full name attached to his uh, cage match account. I don't want to know it. He's Purple Haze. <laughs> All right, uh, Mark. Oh my God, he has a picture with Vince McMahon on his Facebook. <laughs> Whoa, shit! 
post it. Let me see it. <laughs> yeah, this needs to be part of the thumbnail too, Ty. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also want uh, that shot when Booker is holding Charmel backstage. I want Booker T to be kissing somebody. Okay. Because he like kisses Charmel, but it better be somebody else. Like sweaty. I got more Mark profile Henry. pictures for you guys. Yeah, Whoa! You better, you better be kissing Vern Gagne. Oh, there he is with Kalisto. He's here with David Gresham too. Mark Henry is here. Just kidding. It's just a recap promo. No, it's another. It's another promo package. Uh, all I have to say about it is they audibly mic'd uh, Randy Orton Young squash his ass. Squash his ass. Squash his ass. Okay, then I want three noises of that table collapsing under crash, him, and crash, then three crash. Michael Coles. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Because that's what we saw. It really and is then we went just to commercial break. <laughs> Pete, tell me about this <laughs> promo of Angle, Orton, and Mysterio having a little sit down, OG smack up kind of. Bro, this uh, is this is commentary. this is the Discord Zoom call that was held during COVID, right here. That's right. <laughs> this is this is everything. This is what we all did during COVID for years. We were just threatening each other via Zoom call because we're too dangerous to be held close to each other. Yeah, you three are the are the people pictured, and I'm Michael Cole prodding you all. Yeah, so you can ask from... questions. From left to right here, you know, Rey Mysterio's tie. Mm-hmm. That's right. Is Kurt Angle, and I'm Randy Orton. Yep. Yeah. Aaron's just... racist. <laughs> I'm I'm off thirty perks at any given time, and the tie is Mexican. Yep. It's true. <laughs> it's it's damn true. <laughs> it's damn true. <laughs> Hey, hey, Leo. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. I'm getting a little too Italian in here. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, so Michael Cole tries to ask a question, and then Randy Orton's like, shut up. Kurt, how's your health, buddy? I know your neck is crooked and sideways, but how's your neck? Your neck is too fat. I know fat Mark Henry fell down all 400 pounds off the second rope through a table, but how's your neck? And then Kurt's like, it's bad. My neck is actually really bad, but I'm the champion, and you're a bozo, Randy. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, you're a paper champion. And then Angle's like, you're a paper contender. And or- Orton's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, okay, buddy. Mad, bro. I was really he mad He calls him a one-time champion. Yeah, he's <laughs> a he had an Less insignificant title reign. He said, how long were you champion, Randy? <clears throat> like, how many times were you champion? And Randy just puts his finger up and he's like, oh, one. <laughs> and he's like, how long did you have that belt? A month? And Randy's like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Randy, why, what do you do? It's stop agreeing with him. <laughs> and this Ray just sat kind of there the whole time, shit, but also agreeing. Because like Randy did the same thing to Kurt, and Kurt was also like, "Yeah, my neck is broken." Oh, yeah, yeah, my neck broke. Yeah, I had the belt for like a month, and then I got squashed by Triple H. I why did they do this? Did you see me beat The Undertaker, though? Did you see my cool graphics? Because you should hate Randy Orton, which I do. Yeah, but, like, they didn't need to do this until, like, two weeks from now when Mania is, like, the next... We, we got They got a team up tonight and we team got, up tomorrow. We got Saturday night's main event. Yeah, and they team up tonight. We got lore out of this. We got to squeeze lore into this. It's the Discord call, dude. Yeah, They're simply get, too dangerous to be in a room together Vince, because of COVID risks. Yeah, Vince said that we have to distill every ounce of information possible because people who watch wrestling 2006 are stupid and he's right unfortunately but the reality is is that they needed to fill time no i think the reality 90 percent is... of every show is recap in terms of like <laughs> watching wrestling from this era everything is recap about the hey, did you not you're too poor to watch the pay-per-view here's a recap you're too poor to watch <laughs> the pay-per-view we're going to do a rematch of the pay-per-view just for you yeah, here's here's footage of what we did last week and two weeks ago and a month ago, yep. except in twelve frames a second. Yep. Slow motion and sometimes yeah. it's not even slow motion, it's literally just still images. And yeah. then sometimes we're just gonna add in dubbed in audio. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yo, you know, you know what tonight for the main event, it's a little spoiler alert. I feel like we get a lot of the hair dryer. <laughs> Am I wrong in saying that? Yeah. I feel like I feel like the main event tonight's a huge hair dryer night. Yeah. Oh, I get that. You know, and and it's I think coming. you guys have explained it on the show, but basically, for those uninformed, uh, they they pipe in noise, so it sounds like cheering, but it's really the sound of a uh, a hair dryer starting up. 
it's a helicopter in the distance. It's yeah. Like very noticeable, too. It's very, like, you would think that after being around for, how long has the WWE been around at this point? Like, 30 years? Too long. Too long, indeed. But you would think that they would just have, like, stock crowd foot, like, audio that they could have just, like, easily took from, like, another episode or taping. But no, they still use this fucking... And it's like, what, <laughs> what are we doing here? I'm about to reality check you guys, because Miz is coming. Oh, man. Dude, that was one of the well, weirdest fucking promos I've seen. Wait, wait. We got to go back a little bit. Because we didn't talk about what uh, Rey Mysterio says. Rey, Rey Mysterio, Mysterio didn't say anything. No, he doesn't. No, Rey Mysterio, Rey Mysterio basically says, Kurt, I respect you. I got your back tonight. But, and, and for Saturday night's main event. But when it comes to WrestleMania, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal your belt, buddy. So nothing. He didn't say anything. Yeah, Ray, it's, well, it's Ray basic. Mysterio is getting a strike here. He says, "Cause so Randy calls him a charity case, and yeah. there's like, yeah, well, I've always been the underdog. Well, you know what, Randy, dreams do come true." And I said, "Oh Lord, oh, oh God." Oh god. This was really uninspired by Ray considering what Randy just said to him and everything else leading up to the Royal Rumble and now cuz Kurt is, Kurt's the one who gets up. He's like he is not a charity case. He won the Royal Rumble and he threw you out, Randy, you bozo cracker. And Randy's like yeah. whoa, whoa whoa whoa. We really need like a um we really need another Eddie promo in here somewhere. We we're, we're dying for it. <laughs> That's that's what we were missing. I forgot. Ray can't do anything Eddie. unless he's talking about his dead friend. Eddie, Eddie. this one. Eddie, this Eddie. one. Ah, Eddie. Anyway, up next we got Matt Hardy versus Animal. And the Money in the Bank the qualifying. The bank. Yeah. Yeah. After we'll after the the bad breakup we saw last time. That's definitely a word for it. Animal got his leather pleather on. He's leathered up mm-hmm. over his jeans, which is a, a unique look, I'd say. Animal is tired of watching the scene kids run wild. He needs to bring back hardcore rock. Push the emo right, kids all right, boys. Up. Needs to push down the emo kids at Warp Tour before they get they get too confident. All right, boys. All right, I, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do, but I'm going to count down from three, and you already know what's going to happen. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah! Dan, <laughs> Matt Hardy's here. It's been like a million years, I feel like. We He's haven't done that in so knee. long. He was a lumberjack earlier. And he was on last week. <laughs> proto MJF. Then forever. Oh, he's dude. cranking that leg. He was tonight. not the proto MJF because MJF doesn't walk around like a baby. No, he had the like, bum knee. Oh, you're right. Yeah, but the difference is MJF can go 45 minutes with a bum knee and do a, a cutter to the outside while jumping over the top rope. And I mean, Jay White, uh, Jay White had to job to MJF. Spoilers, Let's go. Spoilers for full gear. Yeah, by we'll the get time there. this comes out, it'll be like 40 years old, but listen, yeah, we'll that's be on... what Jay White gets for not signing with AEW. Yeah, once we get to all skeet podcast. Well, he was already signed with New Japan, wasn't he? Look, at, if we'll the advent of all the we'll league. Uh, Look, we need to, we need to move on from this because there's bigger <laughs> things happening in the ring with Matt Hardy. Oh, my bad. Oh, right. Matt Hardy versus an old guy wearing assless chaps. Yeah, he's bringing back hardcore rock and pushing yeah. down the scene kids, like I said. This was a great match. Matt Hardy does nothing. He dies, and then uh, Animal uses brass knuckles, and then he drops him like a dumb idiot. And then <laughs> he puts him under his armpit, yeah, and like then gets the hand. win. Yeah, and then the, and then uh, and Lil Nate's just trying to raise his hand. He's like, "You won. Let me raise your hand." And he's like, "Nah, get away from me." And he raises up his other hand, and then Nate grabs his arm, throws it up, and the sweaty brass knuckles fly out. And he reverses the decision. So Matt Hardy is now in the Money in the Bank ladder match via disqualification. How I mean, pathetic could you be? This I is really like he won. He he fumbled upward again. Yeah, well, and then he gets punched in the face too before the animal oh, leaves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And not only not only all that in mind, he still has to maintain this feud with Animal because it hasn't been resolved. He just got pushed forward. Whoa. Whoa. There's a million matches on this card. Because now JBL is here with his beer cooler and immediately gets on commentary and won't shut the fuck up for the entire match. He is well, loud and screaming the entire time. Because he's hyped up, dude. Hold on. Not only do they does JBL come in here, he's got the beer cooler, and then they're like, he's going to have his beer drinking match with Stone Cold in Detroit tomorrow. 
and then it cuts to a Stone Cold like vignette. Yeah, with it's like, like Kid just Rock. In case you don't know who Stone Cold is. Oh, that shit was ass, dude. And then I... um, the st- like in the song, the song's crazy, because it says, "Sometimes I drink a little beer, sometimes I make a little mess," and then it says, "Sometimes I kick a little ass," and then it showed a woman in it. And I'm like, "Oh, oh God." <laughs> They, oh. they did they know they said like i kick a little ass when it showed steve giving a beer to some girl and i'm like no, no. did they know that's how you know deborah didn't watch the product uh we got uh orlando jordan coming down to the ring uh, kill me uh against Bro, this is united states chance. champion chris Kamal. again no, i feel is, like i feel like orlando I've, jordan's chance dude i'm in a time loop because oh. i'm watching this shit again because it's not like I watched shit like a month ago. Okay, there there is things that are said in here, man. Like this whole oh, yeah. thing is crazy. First off, JBL <laughs> calls Stone Cold. He says single digit trailer park trash. I don't know what he means. Like a single digit IQ, I'm like, guessing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like bank account, I guess, right? I get one of I, the well, two because one of his whole thing is he's rich, stuff. right? Yeah, he's a rich New York man. Dog. Okay, so when Benoit comes like down, he's just. JBL is just yelling throughout his whole intro, and then he says, "That's a future Hall of Famer right there." And I said, "Ah, ooh." You put in the ain't... fame suit, Hall of Fame with uh, Hogan and Slaughter. Did JBL know? Did JBL know? Did he know? <laughs> is this the match that does it? But was this the one? We'll have to it see because be. uh, I mean, it was a very short match. Um, As it should. It be. could have been shorter because it's an Orlando Jordan match. They could have just done nothing there's one thing that i could say is uh benoit is hitting some pretty nasty germans on them and jbl oh, yeah. yells i got fired in germany one time and i really don't want to talk about it that, that would have prompted me to dig deeper i would have really <laughs> pushed on that one maybe maybe we do need to dig deep though I'm what did jbl do in I'm germany I'm just gonna google what as, did as you do as germany? you as you guys dig deep the sharpshooter finishes jordan at like <laughs> two three minutes um, and the funniest fucking thing happens is JBL runs into the ring and bops him in the fucking skull with that goddamn cooler, and I think that was the one that did it. Yeah, JBL knew. That was the loudest was the damn. Did it. That was a, that was shot. a weighted JBL branded cooler. How much Holy beer was it? Well, I found out. Holy what shit, JBL dude! Got hold on, hold on. From. Yeah, me too. Oh, please do tell. I'll let Naram uh, do the honors because I went off on a tangent about whatever his face, Ver, it, Vern uh, Ganja. So it looks like this is a house show in Germany. Yeah, the year is 2005. Yep. Oh, my. Well, it's in Munich, Germany, June 5th, 2004. Yeah. Uh, JBL, in order to get heel heat during a tag team match, hassled the crowd with various Nazi salutes while goose stepping around the ring. This is illegal to do in Germany if used for political purposes. Since this was purely for entertainment, no action was taken. However, his actions prevented him prevented him from. Wait, what? Oh, he got fired from CNBC's financial commentary position. Yeah, that's <laughs> insane. Wow. Well, all right. On June eighth of that same year, CNBC, which had recently fired Layfield to regularly appear on one of its shows after he had become prominent as a financial commentator, terminated its relationship with Layfield for his actions in Munich. NBC Universal was in the process of acquiring WWE television rights at the time. Oh. Holy oh, shit. No. Wow. Do not I'm why realized... would he why would he bring that up? <laughs> he really beefed it. Holy I'm shit. surprised that Vince did not fire him for that. That is like fucking crazy. He really Vince beefed should it. have had him hanging from Titan Tower. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Layfield's actions did not prevent WWE from putting his championship belt on him shortly thereafter he was rehired by Fox News Channel where he previously of course did he was. appearances on as a part of the Saturday morning business <laughs> block. This is from Wrestling Gone Wrong TV. That's where I on their YouTube channel. Thank you for this. For posting this in 2008. Thank you for letting me read it 30 years in the future. That's crazy. Well, I'm glad uh, he mentions that on commentary. After almost what getting was the fired need? We, have to, we really have to know, wonder, like, why, why did he feel the need to mention that? <laughs> yeah, well, according to this article Ty just put in, Bruce Pritchard's like, yeah, JBL did it because he thought it was funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, he 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 might have had, but he might have been, he might have had some idea of what he was doing there, but you know, maybe yeah. that's like, it's not. Fire him. He's like, yeah, it's funny. 
I mean, we're we're talking about Vince, so possibly. Yeah. If this was definitely like, bro, that was so funny, but I, I have to fire you because you cost me money. <laughs> yeah. Dude, well, I really well, I thought I it was really, really funny. Let you know, I'm I'm really rocking with your vibes over there. That was really <laughs> hilarious. However, See, and the board is making me fire team. you. Yeah, well, he brought him back and made him <laughs> champion for like a year straight anyway, so uh, we know he was rocking with the vibe. So we cut backstage. We got Mark Henry uh, and Josh Matthews having a little chat. Uh, for whatever reason, they love to just zoom upward and at an angle at Mark Henry to just get his entire face in the frame. And essentially all he says is that he's not going to be uh, – He's not going to be in the casket, in this casket match. He fears nothing, and he says, Undertaker, if you're man enough and you're not afraid of me, you would show up tomorrow night at Saturday night's main event. But that shit was like three or four minutes of him talking, and he really didn't say anything. No, he says like, like the legend says that you got to fear the casket. Like it felt like long. Like, what legend? Yeah. And now Javari, we got... though, is dressed like a Yakuza character, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, literally the one note I took for this entire show was that Davari thinks he's the dragon of Dojima. Bro, <laughs> blood, get out of here. You're not him. You're so, not that guy, pal. We got the main <clears throat> event, Mark Henry and the tag team champions, Eminem. If you guys forgot, they were the tag team champs. There they are. Uh, versus Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, and the world heavyweight champion, Kurt Angle. Yeah, I wrote no as... notes about this match because I was tired and... I wrote some stuff. I can't believe I wrote, it. Uh, so Eminem and they all come out. Cole's like, hey, Taz, what do you think Molina did with that fitness magazine? And, and then Taz is like, I don't know. She doesn't work out or doesn't need to, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Taz goes, she got glutes. <laughs> yeah. And then Cole says he dreams about Molina. <laughs> and then Taz calls him a no-life loser and an idiot. He's right. supposed to be the straight man here. It's the thing. <laughs> and we let it get this far. Smackdown's brought to you by AutoZone, ATL the movie. Is this a good movie? Can someone look it up? Was this good? ATL? ATL um, the movie. Wasn't that the one with the? Uh, was it? Let me see. ATL. I've never film. seen. Oh, it looks like Ti. Yeah, I thought it was Ti. Yeah, coming yeah, of age right. comedy <laughs> drama. Tip. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for that was a good and movie. Then, uh, and then the new Sprint. Whoa. I don't think Sprint exists anymore. So, yeah, it's because they bought Nextel, I think. Uh, then, sexual. You guys remember Nextels? Out. Yeah. No. They were like radio phones. They'd make the beeper noise. Prick, prick. Exactly. Hello. Then we yeah, it's me on my Nextel, bro. Isn't this cool? Everybody can hear us because it's a speakerphone. <laughs> we're on public. And now Nextel bit of the week. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, well, Timo Wolf does not own Rey Mysterio. Though Rey Mysterio comes out here, and what I like to call the proto <laughs> the proto Cody Rhodes fit. Adrenaline, adrenaline. He looked like a half, like half, half made <clears throat> Cody Rhodes. Like the bottom half was Cody Rhodes, the top half was not. It was Rey Mysterio. Yeah. He's just he's just representing for a, fi- a fellow South American. Uh, yeah, Randy then Rico. comes out. Cole says it makes me sick. <laughs> But I'm gonna have to root for Randy tomorrow. Um, but he said, you know what? He's going against those raw shitters. And he said, we bleed blue over here. He's so right. real for that. Randy may be a, a terrible person, but he's our terrible person, I guess. Mm-hmm. The camera then focuses on Ray looking at Randy, and Ray activates a Sharingan because his eyes are so red. Mm-hmm. I just assumed he activated his Sharingan. Absolutely. Yes, I mean, there's fun. nothing to talk yeah. about. This yeah, man, dude, I mean, this, this is, is a right. six-man tag match. So this is, is the multi-man match. So this is, is somebody, every week's multi-man match. As somebody who's uh, don't does both raw down, smack up, raw down, smack up. I can't stand the multi-man matches anymore. It's every fucking week, and then I get the breath of fresh air. It was like, oh, Undertaker versus Kurt Angle, a one-on-one match. Oh my yeah, god, they need to, Edge they need to versus... Find a way to showcase all the talent at once so that you Edge... buy the pay-per-view, Tyler. Edge versus Ric Flair in a TLC <clears> match. <throat> oh my god. And then I get fucking tag team, tag team, tag team, tag team, tag team, tag team. Six man. Six, six man, man, six man, six, six man. man. Uh, the tag team champions help. lose again. Uh, but they Why are they the champions? Yeah. 
Well, they, well, they don't. Help, they don't though, tag like... with Mark Henry. They have. Yeah, but like, and they look, lose every time. <laughs> in 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 the concrete uh, lore here, they would have lost because they are not six man tag specialists, which was not a thing in this era. They also lost because wrestling. they don't have a match tomorrow against the the Raw boys. Yeah. Well. Wait, you want Kane and the big and and uh, the big show to work? No, 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 no. I don't want that. I never said no, that. No, no. no way. I'm just saying. You no, know? no, no, no. <laughs> Please, no. Well, you want the you want the the tag team champions to wrestle? Come on. Oh, as, God, as, get a, the, get as a as a as a as a jump skip from from Raw down, man. Those guys. If I told you they were the tag champions, you would forget because every week everybody forgets until they come out with the belt. We're like, wait, he's do their tag champion? What is going on here? Yep. Like at least M and M like wrestle and they're on the team. show together. And they're like friends and friends. <laughs> yeah, Big <laughs> Show and Kane are just guys that happen to be on the same team. I don't even they're know who they be. They're just two big dudes. They're just two big guys. <laughs> um, well, let me look up. Let me look up who they be. Uh, yeah, well, we... well, they've been champions since at least New Year's Revolution. God. Yeah, Kane went into the Elimination Chamber match and didn't even bother bringing out his like tag team title, whatever. Neither the Big Show during the match with his one on one. Yeah. Okay, so they've held it since. Let's see. Uh, November first, two thousand five. They beat Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. They've been unf- wow. for six months. NWA's on. I Trevor can't believe. Murdoch. I can't believe they did. Oh, they did it at Taboo Tuesday. All my favorite. Yep. Big Show and Kane were voted into this match as a result of neither winning the WWE Championship voting. Uh, cool. This was Kane's ninth tag team title and Big Show's third. I Kane. forgot that they used to do these type of two things. I'm, I'm actually kind of stunned. I mean, I didn't realize Lance Kane and Trevor Murdoch were ta- teaming up in 05 like that and wanting the tag belts. But regardless, that's raw shit. We don't care. Ooh. Throw that away. A former boo. raw dumbass infecting my brain right now. Boo, boo, boo. I, I was just bringing them up because of how bad they are. So next week, Anyways. next next episode, we got the big get-together again. Well, it's kind of big. We got Saturday Night's main event. We'll do Raw and SmackDown. SmackDown's barely on the show. Just want to let you guys know that there's probably like I'm two segments. The whole thing so I can make fun of it. Yeah, there's like two segments, so you guys will probably be on like two out of it, and then we'll do like a big like yell session at the end. Um, if I put this in, uh, we'll see y'all next week. And we love y'all. Mwah. Mwah. Oh yeah. Bye bye. Yep. Bye. Smack up. Smack. Fuck the Fed. Fuck the Fed. Fuck the Fed. Fuck the Fed. Fuck the Fed.